so we had to because of the lack of releases this year uh our like category in wii u is pretty sparse for our end of the year awards we left out tons of very important wii u games uh re-releases of, of games like minecraft the minecraft finally coming to wii u uh Mario and Sonic at the Rio Olympic Winter Game, Rio Naturally. Olympic Summer Games. The uh, m- uh, name other ga- names games that I could name endlessly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it doesn't even know game. how to speak because there's not a lot. All right, so I do. We can talk about the f- the few games that did come out. Um, I do want to talk about kind of you know like it's kind of tough not to talk about the Nintendo Switch announcement and mm-hmm. Nintendo Switch's impending release. I know in the ne- coming months we'll get more news about it, but. It does make sense now that the Wii U's life cycle is just effectively ending. It's coming to a close, and Nintendo Switch is on the horizon finally. It's not the NX anymore. Pete and I were both lamenting that I'm name being gone I'm still going now. to call it the NX. Yeah. I mean, like I called the Wii the revolution for a while, and then I finally came around, <laughs> but hopefully the NX will stick more in my mind. But Justin, tell me about this... Uh, Again, this new console, Like we see the uh, announcement trailer right here showing this dude playing Zelda Wii U. A very confusing trailing trailer followed, like everything you can do with it. It was not confusing. It makes sense, but just the amount of different ways you could play this console. I do want to touch on that quick. Uh, how how is this going to change, like how we play Nintendo games, or like ideally, how would it, based on what we've seen of it yeah, so far? Uh, from the trailer, it, it almost seems like it's a an all in one console. That this is both your home console and something that's going to replace a 3DS. And I think Nintendo has has come out and at least talked around that, saying that the 3DS is still going to live on its own, that this doesn't supersede the 3DS as, as a platform, as the handheld system. And That's that, what investors want to hear, though, because it's their best-selling thing. They're not going to say we're going to kill our best-selling thing for a bet. Well, I, I, they're not going to kill their best-selling thing for a bit. Like, we still have 2017 with some good 3DS titles on the horizon. I mean, who knows how much longer it's going to last beyond that, but right. you have a budget price system. I mean, there are rumors that the Switch could come in at $200, which, like, that itself would be a game-changer. But right now, the 3DS is kind of the budget system it's really friendly for kids it has a long battery life and i think it has a lot of positives that something like just being more powerful doesn't necessarily make a handheld system better like look at vita like despite being a, an excellent system with a, a really great set of games you can play the entire library of playstation one classics and the games that you do play on it look 100 percent better than 3ds yeah. and it was stomped by the 3ds just because of its library the, the library its didn't help titles but I, I think there were a lot of things that went into it. Like it, when it came out, it was more expensive. That 3DS, you, you were able to manufacture for it faster. Uh, and just the people don't want a, a handheld experience that's going to be what you get on console. Like as much as I think like playing Breath of the Wild is going to be really fun, I can go out in the park and do like, no, I don't want to go out in the park and play Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is a game that I'm going to play in my living room at home. Like, and the games that I play on the go when I'm on the bus, like, those are different experiences and they have to be made to be different. I have to be able to close them quickly to be able to save anywhere I want and be able to get in and out of that gameplay quickly, which is a strength of the 3DS and something, I, we're talking about the Wii U, but something that the Wii U never quite also found its niche. It never found its thing that separated, that, that made it a compelling thing to buy separately from but the, the other consoles. But the gamepad, Justin. <laughs> The gamepad was... A mistake. <laughs> I think it was a good idea that both came too late and wasn't the right thing. Like, the Switch is what I thought... I, I Like, I remember seeing the Wii U's reveal when it, when it first came out, and you're like, oh my god, they're making a portable tablet Nintendo console. And like, oh, oh no, actually, this is tethered to your, your living room. You, you really can't even go to the bathroom without losing your connection, and the battery dies in like an hour and a half. Also, but, yeah. It's just so, like, the tech is just so low on that thing. Mm. And that's the only reason the system costs as much as it does. Like, it's not a powerful console. It has a bad peripheral that you have to use. And games like Star Fox, like, you feel like Nintendo is cramming this thing down your throat. Yeah. When everyone is just like, please, please get rid of it. Please don't do this. And they're like, like, guess what? We don't care. In, like, the (laughs) last year of its life cycle, they're still trying to promote this tech. Uh, I feel like they, you know, the Wii finally nailed it with like Skyward Sword or something and forget how long into that that was before the Wii U but well we saw them arguing with themselves this year especially with the Wii that we saw things like Star Fox where 
you're forced to use motion controls that don't work. That 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 is not the best way to play this game. But you also have have games like Donkey Kong, where or or other experiences where that controller, the screen does nothing. It's just a blank right. black screen. If you want to play it portably onto the Wii U screen, you could do that. But well, it was almost Nintendo admitting, like, uh, yeah, we're going to be making experiences that don't require both screens, and we know this ahead of time. Yeah. So like, the, but for all intents and purposes, the Wii U is almost done. Like. I mean, Very Breath of the close. Wild is still going to come out on Wii U, so there's yeah. something to look forward to. But this year has been a bit, I, I would definitely say abysmal. At the beginning of the year, we had Smash, we had an update for Smash Brothers. The last two characters, not the, the most important, but the most interesting. But, I mean, that's the thing. Like, the most exciting things for the console were, were for a game that came out years ago. Yeah, it's yeah. a huge game, but if that's one of the highlights of a year, I think something was up. I mean, it doesn't seem like, last year, what did we have with the Wii U? Uh, Splatoon? There's a few last year, correct? Oh, so like I'm Mario putting Maker? you guys on the spot. Mario Maker was fantastic. I think that was like our number five game, wasn't it? It was up there. It's pretty high up there. And that's yeah. one of like my favorite things in the Wii U. I don't know. Like looking back over the entire lifespan of the Wii U, I'm, I don't want to just. I'm not hating on. It. I enjoyed the experiences I played, but I don't think I played more than like 15 games total on the console throughout its lifespan. I just, yeah. if I went to it, it was because I absolutely had to, and I enjoyed those, like I said. But I just don't feel like. Maybe that's why I'm so optimistic about the Switch, despite, you know, still questions that are lingering. I feel like, I hope this is when they turn it around, right? Um, I mean, like, this year was pretty good for Xbox One compared to past years, and I think maybe the Scorpio kind of lent some optimism to that platform and everything with that on the horizon. I just, I don't know, looking back, I did not really value the Wii U much. So the holistically, I think the Wii U is great. The Wii U has some great experiences. It looking at it year on year, it's it's not that awesome. But there is not an well, there is another console where you can play Mario Maker. It's the 3DS. You can get a gimped version of Mario Maker on that. But Super Mario 3D World, Mario Kart, Splatoon, uh, the HD versions of Legend of Zelda: Twilight Princess, uh, and uh, Sp- not Spirit Tracks, uh, Wind Waker. Wind Waker, yeah. Like, the, these are great experiences to have on the Wii U and to be able to play in your living room. Earthbound, like, finally getting to download that and play that on a console. Better on 3DS. But, like, there there are a lot of great reasons to own a Wii U, but it's definitely just kind of petered out in this last year of its life. That that this was not the way for it. <laughs> <That's her. laughs> it just kind of justined out, like, yeah. as we approach the end of its life cycle. No, but Justin it, means awesome things. Like, <laughs> it's totally, you know, it hit its, like, Xbox is coming into its Justin as it's uh, <laughs> rising in sales. I think a Nintendo kind of hit the peak of being a stubborn company who wants to, to show people how innovative they are when no one's asking for innovation. I think they got really lucky with, with the Wii. I don't think... Oh, I don't think they may have known how, how successful that thing would have been. Um, and that worked out really, really well, you know. Uh, but the gamepad, I don't understand what they were trying to do. If they were trying to to latch on to, okay, tablets are a thing, touchscreens are a thing, they went about it in the sloppiest way possible. Um, I think that's what it was. It was them saying mobile games are really popular. Instead of making mobile games, let's make our own system that has mobile interface. Right, let's but, take away why people play mobile games and just have people try to play mobile games in front of their TV. Right, but yeah, like it was yeah, it was creating a hurdle that that no one asked to be put up. Uh, and I think that's what's great about the Switch is that there doesn't seem to be this thing where it's like I don't understand this about it, I don't understand that. There is something special. It's a convertible system, but beyond that doesn't actually impact the games that you're playing. Where Nintendo had a really good habit of getting in front of the games they were playing with something that you didn't really care about or ask for. And so many things didn't live up to their full potential. I mean, we talk about the, the hardware, the tech itself, but also a huge push into the toys for life genre with Amiibo. Mm-hmm. And outside of Smash Brothers and having this huge roster of Smash Brothers Amiibo and kind of Animal Crossing, even though there's not much else you can do with it. Like, there's just not that much Amiibo and very little you can actually do with them. Yeah. Yeah. Their like, best is just figurines. Yeah, they're really cool, nice, high quality figurines that I I, know, I don't even like using them in games that that reco- that use them. Mario Party was, I think, an excellent example of a game that used amiibo in the worst way imaginable. Hasbro mm-hmm. makes really cool figurines as well. <laughs> Do you collect? I don't them? want figurines from this? Nintendo. <laughs> just give me games I want. Like we got a, what looks to be one of the best Zelda is like I can't speak to that yet we've all played like a few hours of it but I you know like hopefully like I feel like if they just announced a new Metroid on Switch like I just want them to get back to that stuff like this is I'm not the only person this is nothing new and revelatory that I'm hoping for this Uh, I just I don't know I want them to focus on feel like 
they're in the right direction with the Switch, and I hope they just nail it come whenever they release it. That we didn't get, I, this is obviously near the last, I think next year will be the last year for the Wii U. 100%, the Switch is coming out. And we went through an entire console life cycle without experiences that especially fans have been craving, like Metroid. There was new, no new Zelda for the Wii U until right now at the very end. Mother 3, everybody's asking for it, never came out. <laughs> yeah. All Everybody right, well, me, I, I do want to touch on, I want to kind of rattle through some of the games this year uh, that we didn't mention. You mentioned Twilight Princess Remastered. Uh, again, it's a remaster. It's re-release of the mm -hmm. Wii of the GameCube Wii title, mm -hmm. uh, it was great. I Which played it. Which is a launch title, like that. I think that helped also catapult sales of the the Wii. Yeah, uh, Star Fox Zero P. You reviewed it. Didn't speak too highly of it. it has its moments. Yeah, it can be cool at times, but it's, uh, it's doesn't play the way a Star Fox game should. And I and I hate to say it that way, but that's kind of the truth because they present you with a thing that is like you remember old Star Fox, right? Here are very familiar scenarios, but you have to play them very differently. It didn't yeah. work out. Paper Mario Color Splash. It's cute, it, and it's a, it's another one of those where you kind of have that same experience that you expect to get out of it, and Nintendo regurgitates things really well. They make these games very fun to play, but you can also only revisit that well so many times, and, mm -hmm. and Mario Color Splash, it's, it's fine. It's a very serviceable Mario RPG, but is, that's not what people wanted. Pokemon Tournament. That's yeah. a really cool game. And I feel like the Wii U is probably the reason it's not talked about more. Yeah. Because I don't see if, I mean, I guess Smash, duh. But I don't really see a big fighting game community on the Wii U. And I feel like Pokken maybe... Smash, well... Yeah. I mean, Smash does have a good fighting community behind it. But Pokken was like, oh, it's a very different game, you know? Um, I it's think more of a traditional was, fighting game, right? Closer to it, yeah, like in spirit. And I think uh, that was just maybe lost on people. Like, it was great, and then it kind of went away. And, like, people stopped talking about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like it was wasted on the Wii U. Seeing Blaziken here makes me nostalgic for Pokemon X and Y. He wasn't in he wasn't in Sun and Moon. I haven't gotten that far, right? Mm. All right, anyway. Uh, all right, help me out with the name of this. There's a hashtag in it. <laughs> so Tokyo I think Mar your Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp F-E. Thank you. <laughs> I knew what it was. I just wanted you to feel cool saying it. I, just, I, I wanted to be the embarrassing one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which I, we've had, I, I think that is also a strength of the Wii U, that it has been a champion of really great Japanese based RPGs like these experiences that fans had had wanted for a long time yeah. um, Xenoblade Chronicles or Xenoblade Chronicles X. X. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Uh, an amazing game it, some problems, but an amazing game that you can really only play on the Wii U. Yeah. And she, Shin Megami, or Shin, not Shin Megami Tensei. I mean, it's the marriage of the Shin Megami Tensei series and the Fire Emblem series. And it definitely had some issues, but it was also a beautiful, fun experience. And like that's that is fan service for those people who love that kind of game. Yeah, so again, kind of a disappointing year for the Wii U, but I mean, it's it's nearing the end of its life and we are anticipating eagerly the Nintendo Switch. So we will have more news on that in the coming months, hopefully, I'm sure. And, uh, you like know, once Phoenix it releases... Rising from the ashes. Yeah, let's hope. We'll all burn our Wii U's and then they'll turn into uh, Switches. Yeah, we're all rooting <laughs> for Nintendo. Let's just hope they pull it off. Uh, if you're watching this live, it's not up yet, but you can watch... You can read Justin's more in-depth Wii U uh, end of the year report card on GameSpot if you're watching this on YouTube or the site. You can't because I didn't write it. Dun, didn't write it. Uh, no, Oscar I'm Deus. sorry. Oscar Deus in the UK uh, <laughs> will have that published as of your viewing right now on YouTube or GameSpot.com. 